This represents a new day for climate finance, a new day to help build trust, and it's a new day to build the true new climate economy. Yesterday, with all of your help and assistance, we delivered on trust with the historic announcement on loss and damage. And we now have a fund for climate impact response that is beginning to be operationalized with real money available. I want... I want to thank all of those who have already made pledges, and I look forward to many more. And I must say, I was very encouraged with all the notes and messages I personally received from many representatives from many other countries, committing that they will be pledging in the next few days. We count on that. Before I continue, allow me to thank everyone here today who has contributed to our understanding of the climate finance gap. We decided very early on in our preparations for COP28 is that we don't want to just shoot in the dark. We want to develop a thorough comprehensive, holistic approach to really getting to the bottom of the problem and to get a deeper understanding to the root cause analysis and why aren't we yet progressing in the way we should have been. And here I must recognize the efforts, and the support and the guidance we have received as COP28, from Prime Minister Motley of Barbados, President Ruto of Kenya, and the World Bank, represented by its new and fresh energy, by my dear friend and colleague, A.J. Banga, the IMF, many other institutions. And as I have been saying for a while, we need everybody to bring a different mindset to come to COP28. And I've made that message repeatedly because we don't want just another COP. We don't want just another step. We don't want just another incremental progress. What we need is a giant leap into the future. In a, in a way that makes sense, in a way that addresses the problem and addresses the real world through real and practical solutions. We need a different mindset to fix the fundamental challenge of making climate finance more available, more accessible, and more affordable we need it to drive investments in clean energy projects, in climate resilient initiatives, in infrastructure projects, ensuring that when we are able to actually produce clean electrons, we are actually able to transport them and trans transmit them to those who need it. So it is not only about the deployment of solar technologies or wind farms. It's about the whole value chain of what it's going to take to address this climate challenge by introducing new electrons that will help mitigate this climate risk. And we need focus, in particular, across the Global South because we don't want them to get stuck in between climate action 
or development. We want to be smart and wise on how to incentivize them to do both in parallel. And we need this climate finance to help improve lives and livelihoods. And everywhere, we cannot be selective. And we cannot leave anyone behind.